Start this one off. Let's do it. I'll try to stay awake. Yeah, if you can, I'll just I'll just run with it. So I'll feel CF. free to doze off. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is Sean Harwell. You are listening to episode forty-four of the Never Heard of It podcast, and I'm joined as always today by my co-champion and co-conspirator and co-pay, Craig Moorhead. Mm-hmm. And this is the podcast where we talk about the movies that have fallen through our cracks. Yep. This is our uh, full one of our full episodes where we will talk about one movie that we picked to talk about this week. Uh, we also do mini episodes, though, between each one of these full episodes. You can uh, kind of hear us ramble on about news of the day, interesting tidbits about the movie industry or movies or what have you. Uh, you can find us on Facebook. I don't know if you knew that. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at Never Podcast. You can find us online at NeverHeardPodcast.com. Instagram, you can find us. Uh, and of course, on iTunes, if you like threw a cool review up there and subscribe, that would help out a lot. It would. And um, yeah, we had a lot of fun talking about Boo Amadea Halloween in episode 43. Mm. And then, yeah, had some great interviews with a uh, very fun guest before that so yeah if you're a little bit behind or if you're new go check out some of those back episodes i think you will find something to enjoy agreed and uh craig you know where else they can find us today where can they find us deep deep georgia baby Today's movie is one that I'm excited to talk about for a whole slew of reasons. Um, This is Murder in Coweta County. This is a 1983 film directed by Mr. Where Did My Tab Go? (laughs) Mr. Where Did My Tab Go? I've never heard of him. Well, his pseudonym is Gary Nelson. Ah, Uh, He also directed um, The Black Hole. Yes. Freaky Friday, mm-hmm. Gilligan's Island. A really interesting resume. It's worth checking out if you're uh, an IMDb guy that likes to go down that rabbit hole. And it was written by um, Dennis Nimick, based off the book by Margaret Ann Barnes. And uh, we should say right off the bat, you can find this on Amazon Prime. And I did not realize this at the time, but this is a TV movie. And I think if you know that going into it, it makes a lot of things make sense, <laughs> such as... Like the fade-outs to commercial? The commercial breaks. <laughs> what are obvious commercial breaks? Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, let me give you the synopsis real quick. And this is coming from TurnerClassicMovies.com, actually. And um, here we go. Johnny Cash, yes, Johnny Cash, the man in black, is the honest, no-nonsense local Georgia sheriff who is determined to nail Andy Griffith, yes, that Andy Griffith, uh, boss of a neighboring county, for the killing of a tenant farmer who double-crossed him. Cash's singer wife, June Carter Cash, is an eccentric old soothsayer in this film, which, I side note, I did not realize that. Totally, totally did not either until I saw this synopsis. Um, and uh, she's in the film, and this is, yes, based on a book about an actual murder case in 1948. And it is a somewhat significant case, um, specifically in the South and obviously even more specifically to Georgia, I think it was the first time a white man was sentenced to death spoiler, um, based mm-hmm. off the testimony of a black person. Yeah. Right? I think so, yeah. It's like an opposite um, Jesus Christ, what is that movie? Uh, <laughs> Scout and Boo Radley uh, uh, Yeah, To Kill a Mockingbird to kill a mockingbird so this is maybe you've heard of it yeah maybe you've heard of it um one of those is better than the other <laughs> yeah <laughs> i feel pretty safe in saying fair enough but craig as we discussed in our mini episode clearly my interest for this when i saw it was the cast yeah. and knowing that there was a movie in existence that starred both johnny cash and andy griffith um the title was interesting to me, mm-hmm. and there it was. Um, I don't think you knew anything about it whatsoever okay. prior to me bringing that up, but what did you think? Well, I mean, first of all, I think you were absolutely right, uh, or at least you knew me well enough that, yes, that cast would definitely get me on board. 
Uh, it should anybody, I think. Yeah, right? I mean, that's that's too interesting. Now, I think Andy yeah. Griffith has, has played some bad guys in his time, but mm-hmm. I don't readily recall those movies. So just the idea that he's playing a villain is kind of cool. And then uh, the fact that Johnny Cash obviously is in it. I want to see what that's all about. And um, and the movie... and, and it, like you, you, I looked it up on IMDb before watching it just to see the art (laughs) which is which is like dvd art apparently it totally is and it's 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 poor it's not good um and it kind of makes you feel like oh this this is gonna kind of be cheap uh but but could be yeah overview for me uh it was not at all as bad as i thought it was going to be um actually for for what it is uh, and and maybe maybe it's owed more to the story than anything else. It's pretty interesting. Uh, I kind of liked it. What about you? I, I'm kind of right there with you in thinking this is not a bad movie and not a great movie. It, and it's somewhere in the middle. And it does have a very interesting slice of history behind it. Um, unfortunately, I don't know a whole lot else about the John Wallace character that Andy Griffith plays. I mean, the movie starts off with a prologue kind of telling you that this guy was um, sort of the king of an area known as the kingdom in very rural Meriwether County, uh, Coweta County, Georgia, which neighbors Meriwether County, which is where Johnny Cash is the sheriff, which that will come into play, obviously. Um but you sort of, you know, you're you're told that he's a bad guy and a, a powerful guy, and you see a little bit of that, but not a ton. Right. And that that's kind of my one big complaint about this movie. But that said, um, yeah, it's sort of fascinating. And like even looking up today, like there's there's still a freaking road in that county called Wallace Road, like completely yeah. named after this guy. And like, yes, he was, you know, found guilty of murder. Um, so. I think on on the one hand, yeah, it's got all that compelling true life stuff to it. Mm-hmm. On the other, it it feels pretty pretty hollow in a lot of ways to yeah. me. You know, yeah. I think it gets by on the sort of coolness of Johnny Cash being the tough Johnny Law, like take no shit and uh, going after his man and gonna get him no matter what. And Andy Griffith playing this really ruthless guy. Um, and then, you know, a couple of supporting things in between. But to me, yeah, the biggest thing was I just, I, I'd never had a real sense of like, what is it about, like, why is John Wallace, why does he have such a hold over this county? I mean, you get that, like, yeah, he, he's running moonshine. Okay, so he's doing illegal liquor. And he's giving money to like one of the local churches, which he clearly does not go to. Um, or if he does, it's only in you know in show. Um, and then just kind of rules with an iron fist. He certainly has a uh, influence over the police in that county and probably the politicians in that county. Although I don't remember if there was one specific politician character in this. But, like, there's the the odd bit about, I don't know if you remember when Johnny Cash and his guys go, and we're getting way ahead here, but mm-hmm. they go to this guy's house, Andy Griffith's house, right, when he's not there. And they even make a comment about the fact, it's like, yeah, it's you know, I was kind of spanked in this big mansion, right. you know, famed Mr. Wallace. And Cash is like, you know, it's Wallace doesn't care about appearances, you know, it's more about power. Right. But I just kept thinking, I was like, well, but... To what end? Like, right. you know, like what is this power really doing for him in this tiny little county in Georgia? Like, what is you know he's getting away with, I guess, making alcohol, but right. I mean, is he like immensely wealthy? I don't know. Maybe like you didn't get. I just didn't have. You know, it was like I kept thinking about. Oh, the, the, an interesting version of this would be like The Godfather, where you'd know mm-hmm. like <laughs> who Don Corleone is, and you know exactly what he's about, yeah. and it's a little more from his POV, and you don't quite get that here. And I, I think that is what kind of hindered it for me. I, I agree, and I, and I kind of was thinking about movies like Heat, and how yeah. like if this movie had another hour tacked onto it, for sure, where you can really yeah get the get the story figured out because. 
The thing is, Johnny Cash, who's playing Sheriff Lamar Potts, who is a real sheriff in, in Coweta or Coweta County, um, yeah. apparently when he retired, in real life, when he retired, there were no um, unsolved cases in his, in his county. Like, he, he, like, ran every, every lead down, like, whatever. I mean, I, I'm, I'm hoping that's all on the up and up. But, uh, I know that was my immediate thought too. Was like I'm a little suspicious. About it. Yeah. <laughs> like how many people are in jail right now that didn't actually commit this crime and they just were like, we're not having an unsolved case. Yeah. We got to have a, you know. But that's that's for another day. I think. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And and, and just podcast. exactly like like thinking about the the archetypes of the movie. It's it's yeah. Like his county is essentially corruption free, whereas mm-hmm. the kingdom, where John Wallace is, is nothing but corruption. And so you kind of have this great showdown. And man, yeah, if you really had some more time, and I'll be yeah. honest with you, I'll, I'll blow this right now. Johnny Cash was a big disappointment for me in this one. Yep, me too. And I, I couldn't tell if he just didn't want to really be there making the movie or if he might just not be a very good actor, but he's he gets the blinks pretty bad. <sighs> yeah, I don't know. Like very few of his scenes felt good to me. Uh, and and I man, I really wish that wasn't true because he's man, he's got the voice for it. Clearly, he's got the street cred, like Southern yeah. street cred, and they do such a great job in general with the Southern ambience. Like the mm-hmm. one thing I wrote down oh, halfway yeah. through was like, these are real Southern accents. Yep. Like I'm not hearing a bunch of people faking it. Like these are some real deep Southern accents, and I love that. Um, yeah, and I, I think they did shoot in Georgia in those counties. I did mm-hmm. see a picture of one of the courthouses. I can't remember which county it was in, but I was like, "Oh, wait, that looks exactly like what was in the movie." Sure. Um, even I think relatively recently. Um, yeah. But uh, side note: Did you know that Johnny Cash was in Doctor Quinn, Medicine Woman? I did not. Was he Had a recurring role? Really, he was Kid Cole? Yeah. Oh, I did not know that. No. He's got at least four episodes credited to him from Doctor Quinn, Medicine. I wonder if he got if he got better. He he really seemed uncomfortable in most <laughs> that there was a camera yeah. pointed at him in most of these scenes. Like it was kind of strange. Yeah, there were a few moments here and there. I mean, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, his level of interest that would be interesting to t- try and track down. Obviously, his wife was in it. I know. I feel and like I think yeah, she had fun with that role. She for sure, sure did, and that was yeah, she that was, was crazy great. Lady. Yeah, yeah, that was so well, weird. Let's, anyway, yeah. I know. Well, let's talk a little bit of the structure here. We'll kind of break this down a bit mm-hmm. as far as like how this is laid out. Let's do it. Okay. So the movie kind of starts, and this was another thing that kind of bothered me. I mean, you're, you were sort of starting with Wallace and um, his field hands, if I'm not mistaken. But you find out very quickly that there's a guy that works for him named Wilson. Mm-hmm. And Wilson is sort of running extra shine um, underneath Andy Griffith's nose, basically. And of course, Wallace being Wallace, he finds out, fires the guy. Well, that guy gets pissed. He decides he's going to steal one of Wallace's cows as you do. from the farm. Yeah. As you do. Which that actually, I've heard like the history of the Hatfield and McCoys. Some of that goes back to like, yeah, like cattle theft and pig theft. Sure. <laughs> you can start some serious rivalries by stealing somebody's, <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, at the time, that was their complete food for a winter, but yeah. I don't. In 1948, I don't know, but um, and it's so funny. Like this is another thing that like it's clearly a TV movie concession. Wallace is stealing the cow and like talking about how you know like, uh, or no, he steals it with the dude in the truck, and then he's like taking it out or something. But he's talking to the cow. And like literally turns around and there's a cop there busting him. Yeah. So your busted son. He gets arrested. <laughs> and yeah. so that guy goes to jail. He's he's very worried, obviously, about um being more so released to Wallace, I think, um, than being in jail. And so when it comes up that he's being set free, it's sort of a mixed bag, I think. Yeah. Um but they do the interesting device of he gets out. And basically Wallace and like these three other dudes are waiting for him. And he realized that the reason he's kind of been set free is so that they can hunt his ass down. Right. Um, which that's a neat little plot device. Mm-hmm. And what I saw, apparently that might actually be legit as far as the real story there, which is crazy. Wow. Um, yeah. So there's a chase. 
Wilson's in his car. Wallace and his guys are in two other cars. Um, I think they're shooting at Wilson. Yeah, mm-hmm. at that point. He drives into the next county, finds like a diner, stops, runs out of the cars, trying to get inside to get help as fast as he can. Um, they grab him, and Wallace like pistol whips the guy in the back of the head. The gun goes off, and Wilson dies. Um I'm still not clear if he got hit by a bullet, did he? <laughs> I don't think so. And and actually... I don't either, right? Yeah, I, okay. I think it's definitely... The way it's shot, anyway, it's definitely left up... It's definitely up in the air whether or not, like, is he... Does he die because of that injury? They mm-hmm. don't know. They, but he's definitely knocked out at the very least, and they stuff him in this car, and they drive away. And the people in yep. Cayuta County call their sheriff, Lamar Potts, who's Mr. Justice. Well, that's Meriwether County, actually, Craig. No, Meriwether is where the kingdom is, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. I thought it was the other way around. No, that makes total sense because it's murder in mm. <laughs> county. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, when in doubt, always go back to the title and take it literally because <laughs> God knows what it'll do. Yeah. It's, I'm tired. Okay, yeah, you're right. So, But that is the thing. Like, The murder, if the man died at that moment, it happened in county A. Right. They took him back to county B and disposed of the body. Right. And so, Potts, the man in black, is on the case. Mm-hmm. And our introduction to Johnny Cash is kind of a weird one to, uh, that I thought. It was one of these that I'm, I feel like is sort of like a precursor to save the cat in a weird way. Because they're sitting at like a soda shop counter, and Johnny Cash is commenting on how there's like a boy looking around in the store. And he's like, that boy's britches are two size too small. You can tell it's like hurting his pride and, <laughs> sure. and he's like telling his colleague to go he like gives him money he's like go buy that boy some britches and take it to his mama or whatever and it's just like that's a weird I mean it is weird it's so specifically like oh isn't he a nice sympathetic lawman you yeah. know that he can just look at a kid and I mean but it's like why not just give the kid some money like but buy yourself some britches well, I don't that know that kid's gonna buy crack like he's gonna buy but <laughs> but Coweta County crack. That's, West, that's the hard stuff. No, but um, 1948. Uh, again, I would say in a in a three hour movie, like that mm-hmm. would have been spread out a little more because I like I like the idea that it's like this sheriff really takes care of his county. You yeah. know this this sheriff cares about people. Like just direct contrast. But yeah, it would have done been done a little more sophisticated if uh, you know Coppola was doing it. But anyway, yeah. But that's, I mean, that is your setup right sure. there. And so as soon as Very clear. Cash is made aware of this situation, he doesn't give a damn who Wallace is. Mm-hmm. He doesn't give a damn where it happened um, as far as the jurisdiction of the, that they took the body back to Meriwether County. This incident happened in his county, and he's going to pursue it till the very, very end. Mm-hmm. And the biggest thing is they got to find a body, right? Yeah, and that's great. And... Yeah, I mean, there's some really interesting stuff there. And that's interesting because it reminded me a little bit of The Jinx, the docuseries about Robert Durst, wherein he, I don't know, supposedly (laughs) killed a man. At any rate, he he was like busted with this man's body parts in his car and got off by claiming it was self-defense. And there was some weird stipulation about, well, there's no actual like felony for for mutilate the you know chopping up the body or something like that anyway yeah. it, it kind of gets into that a little bit because ultimately what they do with Wilson's body is that they burn him right and then there's like the whole thing about finding out the ashes but and I gotta say this one of the th- just as a ahead. side note while we're here talking about burning him in the bonfire yeah I, I, I work a lot in true crime you and do. so this kind of thing bothers me a little bit. I mean, it shouldn't. It's just it's a fine story as it is. But you're not going to burn somebody's bones in a wooden moonshine bonfire. Yeah. Like, you got to have a serious oven incinerator type deal. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. I feel better now. Go ahead. Oh, good. No, I mean, I saw him making a murderer, too, but that didn't even cross my mind. <laughs> but uh, what, there's a couple moments like that, though, and actually one of them involves the June Carter Cash character. So that and that's a total yeah. like <laughs> it was such a left turn because totally yeah you know 
Wallace knows that this man is on his trail. In fact, there's a really kind of funny exchange where Wallace is working in his field with his field hands, who of course are black. Um, they're trying to get like a stump out of the ground or whatever. And then, I don't know, I think it's maybe the, the sheriff of Meriwether County, who's a total pushover and like totally on Wallace's dime. Mm-hmm. He comes over and is basically telling him that Potts is coming after him, you know. And um, he said, <laughs> they have this exchange where he's like, you remember that field hand who killed his wife and chopped off her legs? Yeah. Potts, Potts found him all the way in Kansas in a wheat field. And like Andy Griffith's character then says, but that was an N word, you know? And oh, it's yeah. Just like, <laughs> Dude, you totally missed the point. Like, you know? Oh, yeah. And he's like, but that don't matter to Potts. And it's just like, I mean, that that's such like, um, I mean, honestly, it's like it's a really like small minded thing to to be thinking of in terms of race but also just in terms of your own like oh yeah <laughs> getting away with this i was just like i don't know if he'd say that right i think he would get the point that this guy was trying to make right it's like a skin color aside well and, anyway, and so let's he... let's talk about that for a second okay because yeah, no, i don't ahead. know what channel this this aired on i don't know if it would have been hbo or something it feels like it would have been yeah a, that's a good question feels like it would have been a broadcast show because i mean andy griffith was so. a tv star you know so well, and then at the time that this came out in 83, you only got a handful of networks yeah. anyway. So you're talking about a TV movie. It's not like, I don't think, you know, I don't, this was not on HBO, I don't I, think at all. I don't so. think so. And so, yeah, I mean, liberal, dark. liberal use of the N-word. Oh, within the first five minutes. Yeah, yeah, which I feel like, you know, would have gotten a disclaimer at the time. Yeah. Um, back when they're... Uh, for our younger listeners, there was a time when they didn't rate every show that came on TV. Mm-hmm. So you didn't know if like this love boat was going to be the really gross one. <laughs> so just think about that. But um, Were there really gross episodes of the love oh, boat? Oh man, there were some where like Isaac would get a chainsaw. Oh Jesus. And he'd be on like I some kind of uppers or something. It was, it was, mm-hmm. yeah, it was pretty bizarre. Gopher mm-hmm. would, it doesn't matter. Um, But, but yeah, that's a good point, though. Actually, I mean, for what I was going to say is, yeah, this is a TV movie. Keep that in mind. You've got a murder. You're, you're, the N-word's floating around. Mm-hmm. And then this dude's going walking in. You know, they burned a body. And then he's walking into um, a, uh, a a crazy psychic lady. Um, yeah. She's like a card. Well, did she read cards? Correct. She she read Ashes, no. I think. Okay. I was trying to remember. It's been a week. Yeah. Um, but he walks in, and like June Carter Cash... Her teeth are all jacked up. Oh, yeah. She looks like a, you know, poor white trash waif, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, she's got a World War One general's hat mm-hmm. on. And there's a woman in a bed underneath the covers who, like, after two minutes into the scene, like, pokes her head out and just giggles. So creepy. <laughs> so creepy. I mean, it's like a... Um, like that is a really like this dark southern gothic yeah. kind of like crazy thing going on there. But unfortunately, as much as I liked that scene, I didn't like the result of it because he gets to the point where Wallace is basically begging this woman to tell him if she can see the future and if they're going to find a body because at this point it's just buried, it's just dropped into a well, right? Yeah. And like she won't tell him, she won't tell him. And then he leaves and goes out and gets in the car with one of his, like, henchmen. And he's like, wait a second. They can't find a body if there is no body. And it was just like, that's a really obvious yeah. conclusion to come to when you murder somebody. I mean, like, I don't have to murder somebody to know that, you know what? If there is no body, they probably can't find the yeah. body. Um, and it was just like, was this, was this really the first time that this occurred to this guy? I mean, well, and that's the is thing, that yeah, supposed to be part of his arrogance or what? Right. There, there's sort of nothing that, that, that tips his hand that way. Like, it'd be one thing if the whole time he was sitting in there, he was, like, staring into her fire. And yeah, then he walked exactly. out and was like, wait that, a second, what if I did this? Yeah, there's nothing that kind of tips him. So, yeah, that, that was a little bizarre that he suddenly came up with that. But I will say I like that uh, one of my favorite commercial breaks actually mm. was <laughs> when they do burn the body. And like, you know, of course, 
Wallace recruits his two field hands to do this Mm -hmm. and get the guy out of the whale. And they use like a grappling hook to pull him out, which is kind of icky. Mm -hmm. And then there's a body on the end of this thing. And like, you know, they're, they're clearly not wanting to do this, but what choice do they have? And, you know, you get the shot of that bonfire and one of the field hands, I think says like, Lord have mercy on me. And, I thought he'd like totally sold that line and then you just cut over and you see like Andy Griffith standing in the light of this fire. And it's just yeah. like, holy shit, like this is this is Matlock right here just burning down the, the damn body. Yeah, you know? he's just um, got this like glint in his eye. It's a good shot. Yeah, it cuts to commercial. Yeah, yeah. and then you get your fade to black. Um, so here and there, like, yeah, there's those moments that this thing kind of like delved into that really dark underside which i always think is like pretty cool and not something you see a ton of Mm -hmm. when you're talking about stuff set in the rural south right Right. you know you you know you get a lot of hillbilly stuff that are just like redneck things or just completely out there crime stuff but uh i don't know like knowing that this was based on a true story I, i kind of appreciated that they went that dark with it yeah. whether or not that's accurate or not but um um i don't know i thought that was kind of cool and then what did you think about the resolution of of you know finding that body especially like somebody who's working in true crime i mean that is the whole story of this thing like you know yeah. you're piecing together those clues it's a procedural more or less yeah well, you know, I, I did it have enough twists for you? I think it didn't really have enough twists for me. Yeah, I mean, it, I got a little, sort of, I got a little bored in the middle. I think. Yeah. You well, I, I guess, I guess what what I kind of wanted a little more of, like, I really wanted some games between Griffith and Cash. Yeah. Like just a little bit more. Like it, it really wasn't that bad. I mean, like Griffith deciding he's going to take the body, burn it, and get rid of it. It does make you feel like, oh well that is a pretty good idea and now that he's done it that really does make it a lot harder to do what they need to do and I don't feel like at least uh, nothing jumped out at me as something that was just too convenient or too ridiculous um, like I like the fact they got this tracker um, like that guy is like oh he's the best tracker in the world you know yeah no, it's cool and, yeah. and, and they, they kind of spend a little bit of time with him and and then when they find the like the field hands who always felt really bad about like you spend enough time with the field hands to realize like how conflicted they are like they know they will just flat out be killed and no one will care if they say anything against Wallace. Right. And so, you know, so when they finally uh you know end up talking to those guys. So so yeah, so so they find uh they find those guys. Those guys say, "Okay, well, you know, here's what happened. We burn him and I dumped the ashes over here in the river." So the tracker starts hunting like looking around and he just finds this one little cove in a tree which made enough sense to me this tree that was sticking out of the river mm-hmm. and uh and there's just like a big clump of ashes in there so like all right well let's let's try and get that and they uh you know pulled them up and i don't know that stuff worked for me i i, I feel like that was enough i feel like i mean the evidence is already pretty overwhelming that he did it but again in a maybe in a longer movie a somewhat better movie you can you can even better build up the stakes of the fact that like uh that he's it's almost impossible to put someone like John Wallace away. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. Pretty I mean, good thinking, job, but yeah, but I mean Yeah. Well, even like you're talking about wanting more kind of like face time between the two of them or even just like th- like th- a real menace threat against Cash. Because like you think of like in the heat of the night, which we watched earlier this year, yeah, everybody knows Poitier is sticking around in this town, but there are people that are trying to kill him. Yeah, <laughs> you know? um, and you know, in order to not get the truth out, and I kind of felt like that was missing a little bit here too. Like if this dude is this ruthless, and you're like he does, he plays the exact opposite. You know, it's like when you get to the courthouse, he's like, I really hope we can be friends after this, which is kind of an interesting angle to go with for the Griffith character. And, sure. And in some ways, I can kind of see the the southern reality of that. Mm-hmm. But um, I think it would have had so much more weight to it if we had already seen like, you know, Wallace with a gun, like, yeah, you know, shooting at at Cash in a field at night or something like that, and you know, Cash has no idea where it's coming from, kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, there you did kind of want that kind of showdown. 
Yeah. And, you know, the ones, it kind of makes me think of the one scene where Lamar, where Sheriff Potts goes to get Tom Strickland. Mm-hmm. And, and I liked most of this scene. But yeah, it, it, it kind of fell good. apart because of, honestly, because of Johnny Cash. Yeah. Like, like with a slightly so better yeah. actor, it would have been really tense. But, like, they go to get this guy, Tom Strickland, in Meriwether County, in the kingdom. And mm-hmm. it's like all of Strickland's family or friends are standing outside. They're all just big dudes in overalls with baseball bats. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and Johnny Cash gets out of the car. He tells his deputies, leave all your guns in the car. I don't want this to be a bloodbath. And Cash just walks right up to those guys, and like, like it, like it was still a pretty good scene. And it, it wasn't bad. It was that yeah. kind of menace I mean, that you kind of you wanted, you wanted a little bit more of that, just so you could feel a little bit of the danger. Because Johnny Cash never once looks worried. No, no. no. And there's a scene later where I think he was, I think he like held a gun against the sheriff of Meriwether yeah. County like that guy that was having heart problems and like that scene actually I was like that you know what this is not a bad scene like I kind of kind of wished to see a little bit of that like mm-hmm. you know maybe Cash is, is he's a really really good cop but he pushes it right up to the edge you know yeah. which is a classic trope you know sure. he's he's willing to put a gun in somebody's mouth even though that's a completely against protocol to get what he needs you right. know because he's doing it for the right reasons more or less um yeah I, I would have loved a little more of that i think i did like you know the tom strickland thing came about because of an anonymous call and then later on there's a scene and it's like it, it, they're in the fog in a field or something or maybe by the riverbank and there's this guy who's just like standing in the fog he's like, you know who i am yeah. and he's like I, you know he's talking to pots he's like i'm the guy that called about strickland or whatever and I thought that scene was kind of interesting. I can't figure out who the hell that actor was, but I thought he was... You <laughs> he know. seemed familiar. He did seem familiar, and it was also like, oh, yeah, that's another cool kind of, like, the guy who talks and, you know, um, who's putting his neck out on the line, mm-hmm. but is is going to go right back to wherever he's from and is probably not, you know, he might not be the best guy on the planet either. But um, I kind of wanted... I think that would have actually worked a lot better in some ways if he had been like a Boo Radley. Like if you had heard who the hell this guy was mm-hmm. somewhere before that scene. Yeah. Or I, after I for that matter. Was, because, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have no clue who he was. No clue. Um, and then I actually I wrote down after like, that scene. Like I, I liked that scene a lot. Yeah. Like I really liked the way it was set up and on all that. But then I couldn't help feeling like, uh, cause what does he tell him? He, he just tells him about something he heard Mm-hmm. about what happened to Turner. I think he says to talk to the field hands. To talk to the field hands. Okay, that that, that is I the... That's, I think that's the end of it. Right, yeah. that, that's the, the, the valuable information. Because for some reason, I got to the end of that scene, I was like, it's cool that he just told the sheriff that, but, like, what's going to happen now? Um, like, how, what, what good is that? But it, it is actually good. Right. Because uh, then yeah. they go and talk to the field hands, and, and that, that actually works out. And that's interesting, too. Like, again, in a longer movie that could have been another scene that would probably would have been a lot more tense because I mean so much is riding oh, on those yeah. guys deciding to do that they I mean and they could have been great characters if you if they'd had three more scenes yeah. they know, weren't without bad. Wallace like they were, they were really know? well no, cast they were great um, but yeah exactly well I actually I have a, an interesting little tidbit about one of those oh. guys um, this is kind of funny and this will actually transition fairly well to our next thing the older of the two field hands is an actor named Norman, wait for it, Matlock. <laughs> That's his last name. Wow. And his character's name in this movie, apparently, according to IMDb, was Albert Brooks. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Just to make it more confusing. That's, that's um, a little crazy. But, but Norman Matlock was in um, Crooklyn and Taxi Driver and yeah. uh, Ghostbusters, and so he's he's done a lot of uh, big New York films, Night Falls in Manhattan. Well, anyway, and his buddy, I mean uh, Brent not, Brent not Jennings. With us. That guy was in great. Witness in tons oh, wow. of stuff. Um, interesting. And and also, I was going to bring this up later for no really great reason, but the fellow who played uh, Wilson Turner, Robert Schenken. He can be seen in the mm-hmm. latest uh, Mel Gibson epic, Hacksaw Ridge, 
I mean, everybody's... Well, I don't know if he can be seen in that, Craig, but he wrote it. Oh, wait, he wrote it? He wrote wait, it. Wait, what? Yeah, he was a writer on the Pacific as well. It looks like he kind of bowed out of acting around 94. Yeah. But he looks so familiar to me. He does. You know what? Remind me to... He was in Pump Up the Volume. That was the only thing that I recognized from oh, those that he credits, was but... Uh, remind me to read more thoroughly from now on. No, no, no. I did, I did the same thing. I was like, oh, he's in Hexel Ridge. This is guy interesting. I was like, wait a second. I know. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, is this right? Right? He wrote Hexel Ridge? That's crazy. But I was going to say, this actually, like, on the Matlock segue here, mm-hmm. once they do determine that the ash in the river is has fragments of human bone in it, and they make their arrest of John Wallace, and they've got the testimony of the two field hands, and... You know, I wasn't sure where we were in the movie, but I was like, okay, we're moving into the courthouse. Are we going to get kind of <laughs> our Andy Griffith Matlock scene here? And sure enough, it did yeah. not disappoint. He took the stand himself and had quite the speech. Um, I don't remember. This, this may have come later, so I'll save it. But uh, one of my only like moments of humor, I think, in the in the whole movie was when June Carter Cash is walking into the courthouse and somebody oh, yeah. says, "Oh, he got a different hat on than the last time I saw it." She says, "Well, that was my brother's hat. He died in World War One." And the guy says, "I'm sorry." And she's like, "It's all right. We still talk." Which I thought, yeah, <laughs> great. That great was delivery. A great... So good. Such an easy joke that I've never heard before. Too. I'm like, well, I'm, I don't know that I can think of. But yeah, it was. It was just such. A, it was such a great throwaway. Like they did it so so right. Uh, the the other thing that I actually laughed at fairly consistently was how terrible a driver Johnny Cash was. Yeah. And how they even kind of tipped a hat to it, where it was, at some point oh, yeah. his, his deputy's like, can, 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 I, can drive? I drive this time? And yeah. like Cash says nothing. He just like he just yep. gets in and he just drives like a bat out of hell. <laughs> like, I nearly yeah. slamming. Like he's buying pants for a kid who needs pants, and then he's about to I kill know. somebody with his car. That I, I did like, think that was kind of like an interesting dichotomy. I noticed that as well. I was like, well, wait, wait a second. Which guy exactly <laughs> is he? I don't know. Yeah. I'm sure they justified that. There was probably, that was like a note that Johnny can What if he drives like a maniac? You know? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I thought that was kind of funny. It's great. But anyway, so yeah, you know, you're ending up in a courthouse. And again, like I, it was really kind of confusing to me a little bit that um and well maybe this was all part of it the, the griffith gets on the stand and and is basically pleading that the gun went off by accident it was all an accident it didn't mean to kill him mm-hmm. um never mind that the fact that they burned the body you know right <laughs> um but then i think like yeah his attorney says you just what does he say he says you just dug yourself a hole or something like that yeah because like he could, you know Wallace of course comes off the stand thinking he just you know charmed the the pants off of every lady in the in the courtroom there right. um maybe the gentleman as well mm. it's Matlock we're talking about um <laughs> and his lawyer said that and I was like wait I don't know. did I miss did I miss what he did wrong exactly but maybe yeah. that was it I don't know do you have any other theories on that uh well I, I think yeah I think it's just it's it's basically him I mean, because because he's in front of a jury, right? And the jury is trying to decide whether or not he murdered somebody. Yeah. And then he comes on and basically says that he did it. But it was an accident. But but yeah, but it's 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 so unbelievable. And then when you get into like the burning of the body and stuff, like I I feel like essentially he he was so convinced that he was untouchable. Yeah, and and exactly that he could just charm the pants off of anybody. It's what he's done his whole life, and no one's no one's gonna put him away. He feels like yeah, I'm I'm smart enough, and he, and he's just really not. And he, yeah, he just he talks too much. He just keeps yeah. talking about how he was involved with it, and then doesn't leave any room for doubt. Like he definitely was involved with this guy's death, but now he's <laughs> just lying. So yeah. yeah. I, I, and probably, I think that's kind of it. There, there wasn't like a yeah. like a defining moment of that speech. Like there wasn't something like perfect where you can kind of like. I do and wish I'm there surprised. was like that one thing that was like, oh, he said that. Like that's clearly not, you know, that that kind of yeah. proves that he is. But um, and it was surprising to me that they didn't attack the testimony of the field hands more. Like like yeah. you, you'd think that would be the most obvious defense for that guy is. Sure. You're gonna trust these two dudes? Like, yeah. have you noticed the color of their skin? Right. Um, you know, is Kaida so, supposed to be like the progressive county or something? Like, what's what's the deal? Yeah, I don't know. Well, you know, obviously they turned a corner at that moment For in sure. time, and so 
but we got to talk about the ending then Let's because <laughs> once that verdict comes in, the sentencing is really quick and really harsh. Oh yeah, um, he's uh he's gonna fry. He's gonna fry. And, and we see him in a chair. His head is shaved. Yeah. And they throw the switch, and that's the end of, that's the end of the damn movie. <laughs> they sure did. You know, it was interesting though. So so just oh, before yeah. that, Johnny Cash right. goes and vi- visits him in the in the prison. Yeah, I like that little held. scene. And and at the beginning of it. Okay, so so at the beginning of that scene, he walks in, and Andy's kind of sitting there with a smile on his face, and like I don't get it at all. Like there's there was never a point in this movie where, uh, Andy Griffith was like, well, I guess there was when, when he was when they actually found him guilty, he was actually surprised and dismayed, mm-hmm. and I feel like every other moment he was no, he's like high on the hog. Yeah, and and so yeah, so Johnny Cash comes in and. Uh, Griffith explains to him that, you know, basically there will be a call from the governor. Like no yeah, one's gonna, no one's call. gonna fry him. And he says this great line. And and again, so at this point, all I'm thinking is like, what a great example of what we talk about about like white privilege right now. Yep. Where someone is so convinced they're so untouchable, mainly because people in his position have been exactly that untouchable. Oh he, yeah, yeah. He says to a sheriff. I've only mm-hmm. killed four men in my whole life. And each and every one of them was asking for it. Yeah, they had it coming. And like, again, that's like, God, maybe you could retell this story and just like, let me know that beforehand. Yeah. So I'll know exactly how bad this dude is. Yeah. Like, you know, and the extent to which he does rule over this county. Um, he also has a line that, and I wrote this down, it's like he said, my mama always told me, do what you have to do. Never let your conscience get in the way. Yeah. I mean, that is terrible, terrible advice. Yeah. <laughs> so at the end of the day, this is all his mom's fault. Yeah, yeah. She, she may deserve a movie of her own. Yeah, and I, you know, they do sort of allude to the fact that uh, that family has kind of been there in that position for, for generations a little bit. Yeah. Um, it didn't start with John Wallace or end with John Wallace. Um, but yeah, what an interesting, interesting way to end the movie. I did not imagine at the start of this that I was going to be watching something that would end with uh, Andy Griffith in the electric chair. <laughs> yeah, that was intense. <laughs> yeah. That was and you get the little intense. postscript, but like... Um, right. But that I mean, is your last... God. Yeah, man. Just bald yeah. Andy Griffith. Like that was... You think there could be... I mean, do you think there could be like a modern retelling of this? I, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, you just got to kind of find that probably. right angle in. You could definitely do a TV series, but mm-hmm. I mean, I feel like, yeah, I, I, I would totally be into a, like a good, again, like two and a half hour movie made by the right people. Yeah. If uh, maybe Jeff Nichols is listening, what would be yeah. your casting for this movie? Ooh, gosh, Who would you put in know. at least the, the, fir- the top two roles? Probably uh, Keith Urban as the sheriff. Done. And uh, <laughs> who's? Let me think of who's the equivalent now to Andy Griffith on TV. Uh, John Lithgow, maybe. No, John, John Lithgow. Lithgow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I don't know. I did. I tried to think of that earlier, and yeah. I don't. You know, I feel like there's. I mean, there's so many different people you could do. I mean, I even think of like. You know, like De Niro in Cape Fear. Like, if you could tap into him playing that sort of version of like an older, yeah, Katie uh, as John Wallace. Like, I'd be scared as shit of that guy. Yeah. Oh like, yeah. If you tell me he's the one that rules the kingdom, done. I get it. Like, yeah. Although I will um, say, there's something about Griffith, and and yeah. actually, and actually, and actually, a few of the the characters they had cast around him, where it's kind of that soft, pudgy, older southern guy yeah who like isn't necessarily imposing except for like what he will do to you yeah and what he has no problem doing and and what he will get away with like there even to the extent of watching him he punches wilson i think in the stomach or somebody and i'm like it's it's, it still was just like yeah this feels a little weird watching this you know yeah (laughs) he's much more imposing when he's um ordering you know and like call you know causing by command yeah. These other like bad deeds, I think, than, than inflicting them himself necessarily. Yeah, like what you kind of would want is just is a guy who's like who's always soft spoken. I mean, that's kind of what was good about Griffith is he was generally an even keeled guy, mm-hmm. you know. And he just you know, in his county, he's untouchable and he'll 
have all these uh you know i I almost don't like griffith chasing the guy down yeah in a way but then again but i it, i mad. think that happened so i don't yeah. know yeah i mean you would have to sort of uh, you could you could retell that a little bit but yeah. yeah i don't know yeah um and then yeah i don't know i mean you know you could throw anybody into the cash roll i think in a lot of different ways for sure uh, I know I, I didn't know if it was too cliche, but I mean Billy Bob Thornton is always pretty good, always, good yeah. serious you know Southern actor, and then uh, mm-hmm. um, yeah, who, yeah, I, I guess I it's dumb I can't think of somebody. I'm I'm sure I'm like how many like great actors are just sitting around like thanks a lot, Craig. What were you thinking, Charlie Sheen? Charlie Sheen, yep. Done. Uh, Aziz Ansari was born in South Carolina. There you go. That might be a good choice. <laughs> uh, but, um, uh, no, nope. yeah, no. Um, one last little interesting cast mm-hmm. uh, information that I kind of ran across in on Wikipedia, I think, was one of the attorneys in the film is actually played by a real-life litigator named James James F. Neal who was involved in the Watergate case. He was one of the um, appointed prosecutors in that. Um, but if that wasn't interesting enough, <laughs> Wikipedia, God bless him. Like on, on his page, it's like, in addition to trial litigation, Neil did legal work for a number of Nashville-based country Western entertainers. Because why not, Craig? <laughs> why wouldn't you do those two things? And one of which was Johnny Cash who got him in the movie. So, uh, <laughs> ridiculous. I'll leave you with this. In terms of the casting, if Jim Neighbors is not in one of those two roles, yeah. I might not watch it. Well, you know, he should be. He should be. And imagine him being the scariest guy oh, wow, yeah. in Meriwether County. Like That would be some against type casting. God, I would love sure. to see that. Has he ever played a bad guy? I'd love to I see that. Know. I don't know. That guy's a genius. He was Gomer Pyle, right? Yes, he was. Well, Gary Nelson, who directed this movie, I also did some Gomer Pyle episodes I saw. So, oh, man. I think we're only a few phone calls away from making this happen. Is, is Gary Nelson still around? <laughs> uh, I think so, yeah. But I think he was also born in like 1930-something. So, uh, yeah, he was born well, in 34. Well, so still is, with us. So is but, Neighbors. Neighbors is a little okay, bit older well, than that. So we just got yeah. to get our uh, production insurance together. That's There's going to be a lot of scenes where people are sitting down. And that's, but that's fine. Okay. That's totally It's going to be fine. talky. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's going to be real talkative. Craig. Yeah. Do you recommend murder in Coweta County to people who have Amazon Prime and can go watch it at their leisure right now? Yeah. You know what? What's great about it is it's one of those TV movies. It's from an era where uh, I think now now that we're we're so used to having so many subplots and everything going on, this movie you can really put in the background and still follow it. Yeah, that's like it, a good point. it's still a pretty good movie. So like if you need a background thing, this is a pretty great background find. What I about like you? That. I think that's a I think that's a perfect recommendation. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. Like I said, I got a little uh, restless in the in the middle chunk of the movie, mm-hmm. but I do think if your attention wavers, you're probably still going to be okay as far as piecing together the plot and. Come for the Andy Griffith uh, madman of it all, and oh, yeah. uh, some of those other little pieces around him in the darkness. There, I think. Um, yeah, I think there's some stuff to enjoy. I fully agree, son. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, as always, it's been fun. We are going to be back next week with a mini episode and probably in that episode we'll tell you what we're watching after that we've got some other guests coming on down the line here Mm -hmm. this spring and that's going to be fun as well um keep the suggestions coming we got one via email the other day that was exciting because that doesn't happen a lot but you know you can find yeah you can find that address at our website and yeah as always it's nice to hear from you go watch some movies um craig i'll leave the last words to you uh, f- um. Uh, la- last words today. Uh, don't. D- d- last words for for today, Sean. Uh, don't look to the stars. Uh, reach them. Ooh. How about that? 
Yeah, literally. I like that. Yeah. I think, yeah, we all need space shuttles. Yeah.